Hey, what's up guys? It's Kevin here. I am back again with another video. Finally, this is long overdue. Uh, this is a overview slash review of the song for the Mute uh, Shadow Turfs. So I personally think this is probably Adidas's best release last year. There was a lot of good contenders, but personally, I think this is my favorite at least. So again, today I will be talking about all three of their Shadow Turfs, which released in 2022. The Shadow Turf is an evolution of the Adidas Jet, which is an early 2000s sneaker. I also believe that there's some mixing of the Hover Turf, which was also another sneaker that has sort of a resurgence in 2021. So the Shadow Turf is equipped with the hiking inspired also with an Addy Prem cushion. It provides a decent amount of cushion as well as like sort of like a cool, cool like edginess to it but it doesn't provide anything groundbreaking in terms of comfort. So let's look at the models themselves. So all of the shoes come in sort of like a standard Adidas blue box, Adidas original box. This is, so they have three colorways. Uh, one of the colorways was an Australia and Song for the Mute exclusive. Here it is. And this is the honeycomb colorway that I was talking about. Very, very cool details on this pair. So for each pair, it comes with a standard lace as well as an alternate lace. So for the honeycomb, it's a black alternate lace. And this is the wonder oxide, which is the dusty pink. The dusty pink also very, very cool very washed out pink. And I believe the alternate lace in this one was a pink lace. Yes, it is. Sort of like a pink lace as well. Very, very, it's pretty much the same shade as the entire upper. And then the last one is the midnight color. Ah. Here it is. I personally really like uh, the honeycomb and the midnight a lot, a lot. And here's that alternate lace like I was talking about. So the reception on these, I think Adidas just didn't kind of push them enough. So I'll pick up the honeycomb shoe and then I guess we'll talk about the detail. So like I said, the shoe itself is very, very unique. They released a GR colorway that looks sort of similar to the honeycomb. So. The outer facing, this is all felt. Has some sort of mesh as well, some thick, thick mesh. This is more of like a um, patent um, sort of material. You can kind of tell some of the creasing right over there. But this is a very, very soft material, soft leather, rough suede, rough suede here as well. I think it just looks super, super tough with like an off-white midsole. Addy Prem. Now, I do wish that the traction was a little bit better. The tread was a little bit thicker because there were a few times where it did slip when it was rainy. And another thing is that I kind of, although I'm sure it was a stylistic choice, but I kind of wish it wasn't as big of a tongue. The tongue does come off. The tongue tag comes off quite big compared to the actual tongue itself. So I thought this little four motion was pretty cool. I'm assuming this is just like their... They're sort of, I guess, launching pad sort of thing. So something I've noticed, as you can see, so when driving, this sort of came off, which was kind of unfortunate. Um, I've been, so the Honeycomb is my most worn pair, and then next to it is the Midnight. The Honeycomb pair is the only pair so far that I've experienced this sort of issue. Um, as well as for sizing, I went true to size, so I went a size eight, and I usually wear an eight to an eight and a half. I'll go an eight for these guys. Here's that Midnight. Pretty much the Midnight looks really cool where it almost looks like it was dip dyed black and then it faded a little bit, especially the suede part where it does look like it was like dyed black, but like faded away. It just looks super cool. I personally really like it as well as the green hit here. And you can also see that there is no sort of heel separage. Very, very cool. I love, I love the Midnight color. I personally think it just works with like so many different shapes and silhouettes because this is a very like 
it's not too chunky of a dad sneaker like a New Balance might be, but it's also not too sleek to where it looks too form function type of thing. I think this is like kind of an in-between. And here is that Wonder Oxide. The Wonder Oxide is very, very beautiful as well. I really do like all of them have this sort of like stitching detail here. Very, very cool as well as Song for the Mute 001. Again, another green back. Oh, as well as all of the tongue uh, song for the mute and the insole, like one side set is Adidas and the other one has song for the mute. I'm not sure if you guys can, yeah, you guys can see that. So like I mentioned, uh, the Honeycomb was the only pair that was like really, really exclusive to Australia because they are an Australian based brand and they have a flagship there as well. Um, the Midnight and the Wonder Oxide, both of those released on Adidas uh, in Australia on their normal website, as well as um, I think on the initial, initial, initial drop, the Honeycomb also dropped, but it was on Adidas confirmed in Australia and Asia, or, or confirmed Japan, I believe. Correct me in the description if I'm wrong. I believe that's the case. Um, so yeah, so the aftermarket prices on the Honeycomb is kind of expensive. Um, it's a good shoe, but I would not pay anywhere more than 250 300 on these because the retail on these was like a hundred something. I think I did get the Wonder Oxide for about retail um, as well as the the Midnight Color. I paid like one, 160 or so and that's like including shipping and taxing and all that stuff. So the shoe itself wasn't supposed to be expensive. There is another Shadow Turf coming out. That is like a distressed um, version of it, as well as a canvas, I believe. Um, both of those are gonna be super, super killer. They're gonna be later this year. But I personally think Adidas and Song for the Mute really, really killed it on this release. I wish it was more widely available. Um, I really wish that more people had the opportunity to get this in hand, because I think the fit of this is like super, super cool. I'm pretty confident if I were to make a top five, top 10 list of last year, these would be on my top five. I really, I really, really, really think so. I think this is such a beautiful model and a really killer collab, especially at a time when Adidas is feeling a bit lackluster in all fronts. So props to you guys, Song for the Mute, making a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shoe. Um, and yeah, I've been meaning to do this, or me meaning to do this video since the release. I put plenty of miles in this, it's a good shoe. The tread is holding up, but I do wish that the tread was a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger, but as I know, I believe that they're just working with existing like Adidas like outsoles. So I'm assuming back then maybe it wasn't as big of a deal. I would like to see the tread being a little bit thicker, sort of like the general purpose sneaker uh, by Tom Sachs and Nike. I really like how thick of a tread it is, thick of a sole it is. Um, I would like to see that coming to maybe a future iteration, 002, 003 maybe. Um, Cause I really do think that the model here that they have is like a gold mine, really, really. I think they did a fantastic job again. And I wish you guys could see it in hand, but this is the best I can do, I guess. Uh, so yeah, like let me know in the comments down below. How do you guys feel about this? Um, do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it? What do you guys think about Adidas in general last year? Are there any other Adidas shoes that you think might be better than this. Um, there aren't really many that I can think of off the top of my head. I think this is like, this like takes the cake. But yeah, like let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, I will do an on foot of all three shoes. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.